Hey everyone, it's Anthony Allen Ramos. All right, you all know and love Keith Bynum and Evan Thomas from their wildly popular HGTV series called Bargain Block. It's where they give neglected Detroit properties a second chance. Uh, the home improvement duo have also been a couple for more than 10 years and I'm so happy to be chatting with them right now because season three is airing and I'm loving it. How are you both? Doing good, doing good. How are you? I'm good. Well, listen, um, also I gotta say, y'all were nominated for Glad Media Award last year for Outstanding Reality Program. Um, and listen, we love to see an inclusive, you know, relationship in that kind of HGTV home improvement world. Um, so how does it feel to be kind of being a part of telling that and being kind of just increasing representation in, the, in this genre? It feels really great to be able to kind of increase awareness of the fact that, you know, there's a lot of people across the country that still don't really understand what a gay relationship looks like. Right. And I think what this show has done is be able to give us the opportunity to just be us. I think that's what a lot of people like about it is that they capture a lot of the authentic moments that we have. And there's some stressful moments. And, you know, when you're in business together, things get crazy, but they're really good at kind of capturing the moments that, that matter. Yeah, I've never been to Detroit, but I love how you have said that, you know, you came to Detroit because it really, you felt really welcome and you felt really like you could be yourselves. Tell me more about that, because I've never been and I hear, I keep hearing good things all of a sudden. Detroit is amazing. Um, go ahead. I would just say the whole culture there is, um, it's no, it's like nowhere else that where I've ever lived, where people just allow you to be yourself yeah. and there's not kind of like this energy of like getting into your business and mm -hmm. trying to make you a certain way or make sure that you live your life in a particular kind of way mm -hmm. everyone's just sort of like you do you and i will do me and we're all good and that's kind of the whole experience that, that we've had since moving there there's support it doesn't matter who you are or what walk of life there's this community feel and it's not just a feeling it's real when you need something there's a bunch of people there willing and ready to help it's remarkable well listen to that i mean detroit i love it um we need some of the other states across the country to uh follow in uh this this their their suit but um keith texas is one of those states that glad we know i mean it's texas it's uh, tennessee florida right now can be really tricky for lgbtq people and i know you firsthand went through some really homophobic stuff in the construction world and you know just with southern folks tell me a little bit about that experience so uh, back in I don't know, 10 years ago now, it makes me feel old, but I took a job as a foreman uh, for a construction company in Austin, Texas. And um, within the first couple of weeks, it was very clear that this was probably not gonna last for me because the homophobic remarks, and none of them were ever directed at me because I was still closeted at the time, but the amount of very hateful things that I heard was very shocking. And it kind of was an eye opener until then, um, you know, I not being out, I hadn't experienced a lot of it in Texas. It's it's really odd. You can go your whole life and not experience any of it. This first thing you say, your first time you say something about it, you're just like, you know, my family disowned me. I, I wound up moving to Colorado. And um, so, you know, it just it made me really aware of the struggles that people go through when you're different, you know, when you when you don't fit into the norm. You mentioned Colorado, and I think that leads us to where the two of you met. Is that correct? Okay, yeah. that's where the story began. Uh, Evan, tell me about meeting Keith, and you know, just like I said, ten years into this relationship, you've been engaged for five. But tell me about those early that early meeting when the two of you met. So we actually met on Match.com mm -hmm. in Boulder, and Boulder is. Uh, an amazing place. I love it, but it is a very straight place. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of like outdoorsy types. And so on match, there weren't very many like gay guys who were actually on it. So we, I saw him and he, and he saw me and we did, I think like, it's like a wink or something oh, like wink, that. Yeah, um, and he went back and then, so we had a date and really kind of from like the first date, I think we both knew that it was gonna go somewhere. Yeah. And then we were actually long distance for like two years before we actually moved in. Um, and then from from then on, we were 
doing houses and living together and we moved in together and within like a couple of weeks we started an entire home renovation so it wasn't like we didn't have any time of just like oh we set up house you know we enjoy that we're like no we're doing this it's a full gut job and we're going to do two of them at a time and both work full time but you know talk about stressing a relationship but i feel like if you can get through that type of thing you yeah. know it bodes well for your relationship mm -hmm. absolutely well i think this is a good time to do a little kind of rapid fire questions with the two of you so i'm going to quiz you and you have to pick which one of you is whatever i say so which one of you has the more expensive taste I He's a Leo. Probably me. Evan <laughs> loves fancy things. He likes to think of himself as like this humble Midwesterner, but he has <laughs> extremely fine taste, especially when it comes to food. So Keith is covert though, because he'll like pretend to be like this, like just rough and tumble Texan, but then he'll actually, in some cases, be pickier than I am. We get fancy in there once in a while. I love it. All right. Which one of you is more romantic? Me. Probably Keith. Definitely yeah. me. Wait. Neither of us are terribly romantic, though, I will say. Like, we've been told by, well, there was a stupid article written us about, like, how not gay we were. And I was like, that's, like, not fair, just because we're not, like, my love language is word of, words of affirmation. Evan's love language is not touch. So it's like, <laughs> that's, you know, like, we have our moment, but we don't share a lot of that. And, you know, I think it's weird to get called out on, but... <laughs> I know, but let's say that's okay. You know, there like there, there's no rules in a relationship. And look, it's been ten years. It's working very well for you. Okay, which one of you is the better cook? Evan, definitely me. What's the go-to? What's your cooking vibe? Pasta primavera, like the best pasta primavera. Yeah. Anything, anything honestly, anything he makes is always amazing. He puts so much attention and thought into food. Like he needs. To it's do, like, it's how I like to spend like a weekend day. You know, when I have. Yeah nothing else to do yeah which i get the reward of <laughs> i'd love that you know maybe we could dream up like uh a, a crossover with one of the food network chefs do you love any of those food network celeb chefs and I do, who are some oh, of the really. there's too many oh, yeah. to name like <laughs> i would love to do a, a food show i mean i'm not like a professional chef but i'm like an aspiring um, chef and definitely <laughs> like a, I feel like a decent home cook. They're yeah. an excellent home cook. I love that. All right, a couple more of these. Which one of you has the better sense of humor? Me. Keith definitely has a better yeah. sense of humor. <laughs> I do my best to keep up, but he's, yeah. <laughs> No, he's, it's really fun when you meet somebody on the humor scale that kind of lines up with you. And that was, I think, one of the first things when on our first date, I just remember leaving and I was like, oh my God, we laughed the entire time. He has such a great laugh. And then I met his family and I was like, oh wait, everybody in the family has a great laugh. <laughs> his sister has got an amazing laugh, but that was kind of what I fell in love with, was just, we laughed so much. Oh, I love that. All right, last one. Which one of you is a better listener? Hmm, we both suck at listening. <laughs> Good question. I feel like it really is it's topical. It, it like it depends on what the topic is. Yes. If we're talking about something that I love, I'm all ears. <laughs> if, or it's, if it's something that I love, then I'm all ears. Right. We both yeah. buy a lot over UFOs. So we are always really listening about that kind of stuff. I would say Keith is probably the higher emotional intelligence, maybe in some regards. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. It just it just really varies. It does vary. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's you know that brings up a good question because you know this show season three millions of people watch it every single week, which is so great. But you know it can be tough for queer couples, for straight couples to literally be a couple and then also work together. So, what mm -hmm. advice do you have out there for anyone that may be navigating living with someone and also going to work with them? If you're working with your partner, I would say you just have to learn how to um, like compromise and let go of the things. Oh, you just have to continue. You just can't hold on to your things too tightly, mm -hmm. basically. You know? No, I think that's a really good way of putting it. I've grown so much because I've been able to let go of, you know, I used to love rhinestone and turquoise so much, <laughs> but Evan has helped me let go of some of those things and move into, you know, like learning from him on res like restraint has, he's taught me a lot on restraint and that's helped a lot. But yeah, I've had to let go of a lot of things that I kind of feel like where a, a relationship 
fails is when people just decide like this is a deal breaker right. and it like can I cannot be moved off of that. Right. You know, it's like this uh -huh. is it and that's when things I think are not going to work. Um but if you can sort of be more flexible then you can make a lot of things work. Yeah, fundamentally I think we have almost everything in common. But when we find those things that we don't, we, we usually can work around it. Very well said. Uh, like I said, the engagement, I, I think many people want to know when is the wedding happening? But instead, I, I won't ask that question. What I will say to you is we're in a very tricky spot with the country. And I think, Evan, you said we, we definitely need to get married before we can't because let's be real, our rights are in jeopardy. So what is the latest with the wedding? I know you want to do it right and have it be everything, but you know. This is it's really weird that you bring this up because I've never ever in my entire life had a wedding dream. And last night, mainly hey. because the mattress was terrible, but <laughs> I had a wedding dream and the, it, okay, so this is what happened in the dream. Evan does not do surprises ever. And <laughs> in this dream, it was really kind of a brief one, but my friend came up and was like, here, put these clothes on and get in the car. And I was like, what is going on? And she just kept insisting. So I did it, got in the car. We drive across this weird bridge. Again, it's a dream, so none of the thrill. But Evan's standing at the end of the bridge in this black and white suit. And I was just like, well, that's really weird. And so as we get closer, he gets down one knee and I'm just like, what is going on? I literally fell out of the car and then I started crying and then I woke up. This but is anyway. all news, news to me. I it literally happened like 12 hours ago. Now. That was really weird. Uh, but I need to investigate the tax implications of marriage prior to doing it. <laughs> no, there's a lot to consider. And, you know, I will say this. We see a lot of people that kind of, uh, I don't want to say rush into a mm. marriage. But there's a lot of people that are really eager to do that and sometimes it goes great and sometimes it doesn't and i think that's where we're kind of at is like i want to make sure that we're both in a spot where it goes well um i mean it's to me i don't even really think about it because it feels like we're yeah. married so it's, it's just not really like yeah. in my head like of like something that i need to do because it's like yeah, it feels we, like, it done, feels like but, it's done but yeah. yeah i guess technically it's not but <laughs> i can identify with that i've been with my partner for 15 years and i'm like I feel like we are, I mean, we own property and it's all that, but you know, I think it's still important and it's still very yes. nice to do the wedding. Uh, and listen, maybe HGTV can make it some sort of special. I don't know. I think it'd be great for, for, for y'all, but and for us, but um, it has been so uh, nice to meet you both. And just a reminder, everyone, you can catch their show. It's Bargain Block Wednesdays at nine on HGTV. New episodes are going to be rolling out through November. We're so excited, uh, but cheers to you both. And it's so nice to meet you. Thank, Thank you. you. Very much. Nice to meet you too. That was yeah, fun. this is fun.